Our second guide who clearly knows where his towel is is Basmi Hussein, and he's CTO at the ABB Group since January 2016, for a year now. And he can look on a, a long career in this company within ABB. He held different positions in India. He headed ABB's Global Smart Grid Initiative, and he worked in various roles in research and development, in strategy and business operations around the globe. For example, he was head of ABB Global Research in Bangalore or of the Corporate Research Center in Sweden. Douglas Adams once said, you have to look at where you actually want to go and not where you're frightened you might end up. And I know that Bosmi knows exactly where he wants to go with his company and he will, he will share now his views with us. Bosmi, the control is yours, we're ready to take off to the hike to the ABB galaxy. Please, that's me. Thank you, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, let me all wish all of you a very happy new year. Uh, and now, since you've been all very well and efficiently fed, uh, I guess it's time for some energy, and uh, uh, this is what I'll be talking to you about. So, um, to start with, since this is not an ordinary event, uh, the safe harbor statement cannot be the normal one either, okay? Um, we will be moving forwards and backwards in time. Uh, we will be making uh, statements about uh, uh, business that might uh, impact some of you uh, and your business. So uh, for this kind of a session, I think the most important really thing is uh, really your willingness uh, to come along me, uh, along with me in, on this journey. So, let us first take some step back into time. And we go to the year 1877. Now, why 1877? Because that's the year where, uh, uh, you know, uh, Alexander Graham Bell uh, made uh, the first long-distance call, and uh, Thomas Edison made his first uh, uh, big invention, the phonograph. Um, and you know, both these gentlemen who uh, were born, incidentally, in the same year, uh, they made inventions that have impacted uh, the way we live. Now, if we bring them to life today, um, Mr. Graham Bell would um, have uh, difficulty in understanding what we are doing when we take out a mobile phone and start talking to people, or um, you know, texting a message, or reading mail, uh, and the whole infrastructure, as you can see from the screen, uh, would be quite alien uh, to him, because from uh, something which was very simply structured and laid out uh, has become fully digital, there are no wires anymore, uh, so it would be something somewhat of a surprise. On the other hand, Mr. Edison would be quite at home when he would look at our electrical system. Uh, you can see from the picture that um, you know, we, we even had to make some of the pictures of the early electrical system uh, look older, okay, uh, by just using the colors. But essentially, you can, you can notice that um, uh, they are not that much different. He might be surprised by the voltage levels, uh, by the amount of energy that is being consumed, uh, but the structure of the system would hardly be a surprise um, for, uh, for Mr. Edison. And if we wander around uh, and that 
um, times um, you know, in history, we would also see that like always, predictions have always been a risky business, especially if it's about the future, okay? Um, and you can see that people kind of uh, got uh, whether horses and automobiles or what will happen to nuclear energy, um, they didn't quite get it right, but some things they did get right. For example, if you look at um, uh, Mr. Faraday, he could predict that um, electricity could be something that could generate taxes. And as I think that's something that most of us here could equate with. That, um, so he did get that one right. <coughs> so that's about you know, going back in time. Now, let us now fast forward uh, 25 years ahead, okay, of now. So this is the event, BFE event, uh, 25 years hence in 2042, and as you heard, in the beginning of the session that 42 has a special meaning um, in uh, the Hitchhiker's uh, Guide. Uh, 42 is the answer to the question, except you have to understand the question correctly, okay? So, uh, what, what, what is the scenario that we see in uh, 2042? We see a scenario where the, you know, many of the industries as we know it, as we know today, have been disrupted. Some of that has already happened now, some of it is on the way to happen, but things like, you know, I know the largest uh, movie company, you know, does not have any, any movie theaters. The largest taxi company has, owns no, no, uh, no taxis. What does it all mean? There's a, a greater separation between assets and the business, okay? If you look at the electrical industry, it has changed, you know? Uh, electrical industry has changed in the sense that in, that in that new system, you have a situation where you have much more long distance, uh, much more long distance transmission lines than, than, are, than are there in the world today. HVDC, which uh, ABB introduced into the world in 1954, um, is the primary carrier of really, um, uh, which is used for long distance transmissions. Power quality in, uh, has become all the more important. From 2017, where slightly less than 20% of our energy use is electrical, it has gone up to um, uh, more than 50 to 60 percent, um, you know, uh, of uh, energy that we use will become electrical in nature. Digitalization uh, has, um, has, has uh, penetrated all levels uh, of, uh, of the electrical system from, uh, you know, um, a better maintenance, uh, condition-based maintenance, uh, to enabling newer business models, and the grid has become, uh, you know, a combination of a grid of grids and a large grid all at once. Storage, which was notably absent um, in, the, uh, in the electrical system, is now uh, become more and more, more and more prevalent. Looking at some of the business models, again, the movement has been to move from asset-based uh, systems to assets and services. Assets and services also um, from, uh, you know, consumers um, and suppliers, you become producers and consumers. There's a new breed that's really come up that has been called prosumers out there. Technology played its part too, okay? If you look at how um, you know, solar prices have been dropping, okay? Already today, I think in the world, more than 50 countries, it is the case where solar is now the cheapest form of energy, okay? And, and that number is growing. Also, the grid is now getting more and more uh, capable of accepting 
larger amount of, uh, of renewables. This has happened over time, and by 2050 or so, um, it will be the case that almost every part of the world would have high penetration of renewables and yet keeping a stable grid. If you, there are today differing views on how the grid is going to be uh, evolving, okay? Um, on one hand, you have uh, a vision uh, which is piloted more by or championed more by the state grid of China, which is looking at a global internet, a uh, global energy internet. And on the other hand, you have the Elon Musk kind of vision, which is really looking at um, independent housing, in the, you know, uh, what are also called grid defectors. And I think what we would find is that in the evolved grid, both these will be accommodated. Also, at the same time, we would have from a good demand side management coupled together with more storage in the system to keep the grids stable. But if you come back to 2017, how do we get from here to there? And, and that is what like to leave you with is that most of the technology that has been needed for this transformation exists today. Okay? Most of this technology wise, it is ready. What I think is needed is one, the market adoption, and secondly, the role of regulator is key for this change to happen. So, my final words to you is, don't panic, but let's ride the future together. Thank you very much.